get it cracking, man. Hey, folks, man, this is Monk, and we are back with another episode of From the Canopy Film Show. And I'm joined, as always, with my co-host. We got Cornelius, a.k.a. Evil Corny. What's up? Well, what we're going to do today is talk about some film news and do some reviews. And we like to start with the news first, man, so let's get this out the way. And right off top, I do want to say rest in peace to Angela Lansbury, man. The Murder, She Wrote star has passed away at the old age of 96, man. So that's crazy. Um, she did have an entertainment career that um, spanned 80 years, man. That's crazy, dude. Doing all types of um, film and TV. Um, and one of the things that I did take the time to look up was her filmography. So um, her first credited um, film role was in a film called Gaslight in 1944. Um, she did a lot of, you know, smaller roles over the, um, you know, years, um, including several, um, weren't they, um, some TV movies based off Murder, She Wrote, I believe? I think so. I, that's a series that where I watched when I was a lot younger and, you know, mm -hmm. hadn't thought about, you know, yeah. Prince Stephanie Wiley watches Murder, She Wrote on a, on a regular, but, you know, that's, that's a show I haven't looked back on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but she's done so many uh, films, man. It's kind of crazy out here, man. Um, a lot of film credits are here, um, including uh, The Purple Mass, a uh, film called Please Murder Me. Um, just a big um, career, the greatest story ever told. She was in that. I think that was a biblical ad adaptation yeah, yeah. Like in the vein of those um, C.C. Um, v. DeMille um, kind of um, films and stuff like that, man. She also appeared in an adaptation of Death on the Nile, um, you know, which I think that was a 78 version. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, she also did a um, Beauty and the Beast in 91. Oh, dang, that's right. She did do a voice on that, dude. Wow, that's crazy, man. Also um, in the film adaptation of Anastasia and Fantasia 2000. So this is kind of interesting, man. Mary Poppins, Mary, Mr. Popper's Penguins. Um, she was in that. I guess her last, uh, wow, dude. Damn, that's kind of sad. Her last film credit is going to be this year's um, Knives Out film, Glass Onion. Okay. Yeah, so that's going to be post-humans release. I think that's coming out soon, man. Yes, yeah, uh, um, Thanksgiving week, I think. They actually go have it in theaters before it's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rest in peace, Angela. Um, My, the, first, the first film I saw her in, I want to say, was um, Portrait of Dorian Gray. Mm -hmm. I think she might have been his love interest in one part of it. And then the Manchurian, the original Manchurian candidate with uh, Frank Sinatra. Oh, okay. Uh, I cannot think of the, the, the guy that that's the actual Manchurian candidate, but um, she plays his mother and she might just be like three years older than him, you know, in that mm -hmm. film. And that, to me, that's always seemed like it was real trippy, you know. Mm. But it's a black and white film, and they didn't really make her look any older than she was. But I just always thought that that was kind of, you know, a weird mm -hmm. thing to do. But uh, rest in peace, Angela. So other uh, film news that I have right now. Um, so my um, interesting thing, man, I didn't know this was in development, but um, we actually got a um screenshot of um this character in costume so there's a uh red sonia um film that's in the mate in the works and we actually get a picture of the star uh matilda lutz in costume um as red sonia and that's pretty cool man so this is gonna be it's weird because at the time when they made the original film i think marvel comics had the rights to this but I think right now there's a different um, comic book company that makes these books. And I can't, I think it's, um, I forgot the name of the company, man. Maybe Wildstorm. Or... I, mean, you know, I think it might be Di Dynamite. I might be wrong yeah, because at one yeah. time I was, yeah, at one time I was, I was um, buying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think whoever puts out those Dynamite books is um, behind this, man. So this is kind of cool, man. There's potential for this to be something, you know, interesting. I'll definitely check it out, man. I definitely love the, that Robert E. Howard, Conan, Red Sonja, uh, Call the Conqueror type, you know, fantasy uh, the world. Let me see, my other story. Uh, so apparently they're also working on a Joy Luck Club 2 film. And this is like coming nearly 30 years after the first movie. Um, it's going to be um, in development of a writer, Amy Tan, and the original cast members are in talks to return. At the time, and I remember there was a big... Um, spotlight on it because it featured pretty much an all Asian cast and you know that was a big deal 
Uh, yeah, and it was also a film that cost ten and a half million to make, and the box office gross came in at thirty two million. So it was one of those films that benefited from the Oscar buzz, and that definitely made a big impact. I think uh, you know a lot of people went to watch it. So it did say it was snub, snubbed by the Oscars at the time. So I think it was nominated. It was also nominated for a BAFTA for Best Adapted Screenplay. And it won the award for Best Feature Film Casting from the Casting Society of America. And it had an ensemble cast that included um, Sai Chen, Kyu Shin, uh, Lisa Liu, France Nguyen, uh, Rosalind Chow, Lauren Tom, Tamlin Tamita. And uh, Ming Na Wen was actually in that too, man. That's crazy. For some reason, I thought what's her name was in this as well, uh, Michelle Yeoh. Michelle but, Yeoh, but she wasn't. So that's even more impressive because really, most of these people at this time they were not uh, familiar to American audiences, man. But I think also one of the things that was happening with this film is that the novel itself was also a bestseller novel. Okay. So that kind of you know fed into you know the, the the buzz around it but it'll probably be something that i think i should check out just to have part of my you know just to complete my film film goer filmography you know so i think i might um seek that out man see if i can find that streaming somewhere just to get familiar but that's cool man i think also maybe you could probably attribute this to the fact that we've got you know some pretty strong asian actors right now doing really big things as well as the success of you know crazy rich asians Yep. Um, another story we've got here. Um, so Transformers 7, <laughs> which will be called The Rise of the Beast, has cast Pete Davidson and Michelle Yao as the voices of Autobot Mirage and Maximal Air Razor. So this is crazy. I wonder who's doing who, though. I think Pete Davidson playing Mirage. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's interesting. Um, so this story is interesting as well. It's going to be set in 1994, Brooklyn, and the live action movie will continue to delve into the ongoing battle between Autobots and Decepticons with a chaotic emergence of the factions Predacons, Terracons, and Maximals. Wow, the transformation of a uh, yeah, we don't need the rest of that, but that's yeah. interesting, dude, because um. I mean, you're familiar with any of those series. Both of those, the original series actually takes place in Earth, and there's no humans. It's just robots. It's actually in a closer to when the Autobots first landed on Earth. Yeah, you know, prehistoric you know, times, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the mythology of it, they crashed here millions of years ago. You know what I'm saying? Which is interesting, too, because I think that timeline is probably all messed up now, unless there's something in the books that explains things, because in the comics, and the, the the original cartoon version, they crashed. They're stuck under this dang volcano for for millions of years, and then there's like an eruption that awakens them, and then they wake up in modern Earth. But in the comics, it's they crash land to a prehistoric Earth, and they start their fight there. And uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Dude. It's convoluted. It don't Over, matter. Overall, I kind of wish that um, they would have had a sequel to that Bumblebee film because I really love Bumblebee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I thought that was a real well made film. Um, yeah. I kind of like the first and the third Michael Bay film, but like in Bumblebee, um, mm-hmm. the look of the Transformers was real neat to where you can actually make out what they were without it, it you know, without it being a, just a bunch of you know mm-hmm. shit on the screen. You know, yeah. they actually had a, a um, you know more original, you know, um, cartoon accurate. Um, at least uh, Bumblebee had a more of a Cartoon accurate type of um, body and everything, and mm-hmm. um, the tra- and the um, Decepticons that came across. I'll just have that on this one. I don't really care if it's being made or not. I'll just see it. You know, if it's doing good, you know what I'm saying, or it looks good. Yeah, I might see it, man. Who knows? I don't. You know, it's, I don't. I don't care. Like, it's, like you know, it's, if there's nothing else going on, and, and I could see some big dumb action on the screen, I'll probably check it We've out. We've had um, a crazy turn of events um, recently. So I think on the last episode that um, we announced that uh, Blade's director has stepped down from filming the, um, you know, from directing the film Blade. So. You know, since then, it seems that they've decided to delay Blade because it seems like they've also officially put a halt to production on it. So maybe they're going to take some time to find a director. And I think also, man, there were some rumblings of, you know, issues with um, possibly the story and, and, you know, what they had, you know, in the script. So maybe they're going to take some time to retool that and get a new person on board. 
But since that happened, it, it seems to be that Blade might be more important to what's coming forth than, you know, we first thought. Because since it got halted, you know, Marvel has shifted their schedule on a lot of um, upcoming projects. Some of them more than others. So Blade was previously um, slated to come out um, November 2023 and it's going to move to September of 2024. So this is actually the biggest move um, so far. So that's almost um, a year, you know. And, um, but the other films following it, uh, the movements aren't so crazy. Um, so the Deadpool's third film is was um, scheduled for September of 2024. It's going to move to November of uh 2024 so small change fantastic four was previously dated for uh november of 2024 and that's going to move to february of 2025 um an unnamed marvel um film was dated for february um 2025 and that's going to move to november 2025 and that's actually one of the bigger uh, moves that we're seeing here. And we don't know what this film is going to be. There's no idea. <laughs> Marvel hasn't even revealed. Um, so the Avengers Secret Wars film, that was previously dated um, for November of 2025. And that's going to bo- be going to May of 2026. So this is a big move right here. What, for the Avengers what, what day did they give King Hulk Legacy? That's not on this list right here. I think okay, the original date on that I think was May of um, twenty twenty five, mm-hmm. and the original date for um, Secret Wars was November of of twenty twenty five. So that one may remain the same because it's okay. definitely it's not on this list at all. I wonder what a mystery movie is though. I mean, uh, you know, entitled film. Yeah, well, there's another untitled movie that was supposed to be May of um, 2026, and that has been removed from the schedule. Okay. But also want to point out, too, we had another news story last week um, that I forgot about until just now, that um, Armor Wars. So Armor Wars was originally slated to be a um, Disney Plus TV series, and that's been um, upgraded to become a film. And we don't have a date for that at all, you know. So, yeah, I don't know, dude. Yeah, <laughs> it's, not, it's some stuff that's out. happening kind of loose, but you kind of, I think, like that Blade and a couple other films. It's almost mm-hmm. a timeline type deal where they have to come out at a certain time. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah, in a certain mm-hmm. sequence or whatever. Yeah, I think that's what that's mostly about. Um, but it's also kind of interesting. The earliest thing that we're going to get. You know, on those changes is um, uh, Next 2024. So that's the earliest we're going to get any of these films that I just mentioned. It's going to be oh, 2024. Okay. Yeah. So that yeah. So we got a while to wait for that stuff. I'm not sure what's on the slate for 2023 fully. You know, I got to look. But I know I know Quantum Mania. I want to mm-hmm. say uh, Quantum Mania for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I don't can't remember. And possibly, I think Guardians um, three. Yeah, Guardians was supposed to be next year too. Yeah, yeah. Guardians will be next year yeah. too. That's all I could think of offhand, um, unless something else that I'm forgetting about. But that's all that I could think that we can guarantee is going to make 2023 for sure. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's it for my news, folks.